The president has just started to speak. This is Las Vegas at the high school where he is set to talk about rolling out his immigration reform. Let's watch. You know, I'm, I'm so inspired by the introduction by Astrid. Now, last night I spoke directly to the American people about immigration. And you heard me talk about Astrid. And if you watched her introduction just now, uh, you heard her talk a little bit about herself. She was, she was brought here as a little girl and grew up believing in America and in her identity as an American, just like Malia or Sasha. And then as she grew up, she found out that she was undocumented, which meant she couldn't do all the things her friends could do. She feared that she and her brother could be separated from their dad. And then one day she decided to start advocating for her fellow dreamers and to stand up for her family and to fight to make a difference in this country that she loves. And part of what makes America exceptional is that we welcome exceptional people like Astrid. It makes us stronger. It makes us vibrant and dynamic. It makes us hopeful. We are a nation of immigrants, and that means that we're constantly being replenished with strivers who, who, who believe in the American dream, and it gives us a tremendous advantage over other nations. It makes us entrepreneurial. It's a, it, 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 it continues the promise that here in America, you can make it if you try. Regardless of where you come from, regardless of the circumstances of your birth, now, our immigration system has been broken for a very long time, and everybody knows it. As Americans, we believe in fairness, the idea that if we work hard and play by the rules, we can get ahead. But too often, the immigration system feels un fundamentally unfair. You've got families who try to come here the right way, but sometimes get separated or stuck in line for years. You've got business owners who are doing the right thing by their workers, offering good wages and benefits, and then you've got companies that are ignoring minimum wage laws or overtime laws, taking advantage of undocumented immigrants, and as a consequence, undercutting the employers who are doing the right thing. All of us take offense to the idea that anybody can reap the rewards of living in America without its responsibilities. And, and folks like Astrid and Astrid's parents, who desperately want to make amends, embrace the responsibilities of living here, they're forced to either live in the shadows or risk having their families torn apart. We've known about this for years, and we've known we can do better. And for years, we haven't done much about it. Well, today we're doing something about it. Now, when I took office, I committed to fixing this broken system. And I began by doing what I could to secure our borders, because I do believe in secure borders. And over the past six years, illegal border crossings have been cut by more than half. Don't let all the rhetoric fool you. There was a brief spike this summer in unaccompanied children being apprehended at the border. But it was temporary, and the number of such children is now actually lower than it's been in nearly two years. Overall, the number of people trying to cross our border illegally is at its lowest level since the 1970s. When I was in high school, and I've got gray hair now, so it's been a long time. And nearly two years ago, I came here, Del Sol High School, right in this gymnasium. And I said, and they all said that, yes, we should secure our borders, we should bring our legal immigration system into the 21st century, and then once and for all, we should give the 11 million people living in the shadows a chance to make amends and earn their citizenship the right way. So those were our principles. We laid them out. We were very clear. And after I laid out those principles, we then went to work with Congress. And we started in the Senate. And you ended up with a big majority of Democrats and Republicans and independents all coming together in the Senate to pass a bipartisan bill based on these principles. The, 
the Senate bill wasn't perfect. It was a compromise. That's, that's how things work in Congress. That's how things work in a democracy. Not everybody was satisfied with every provision. But it was a good, solid, common sense bill that would have made our immigration system a lot better. Would have doubled the number of Border Patrol agents. So for those who wanted more border security, that was in the bill. It would have made the legal immigration system smarter and fairer. It would have given the opportunity for young people who are talented and, and who have you know, gotten a degree, maybe in computer science or you know, some technical field, to stay here and work and, and contribute and, and create a business and create more jobs. We are watching the president at Del Sol High School. This is in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, he, right when he landed on Air Force One there, he signed two presidential memoranda associated with his executive actions on immigration. And now he is talking to a group there at the high school. This is the very place where he outlined his ideas for immigration.